friends, hope you're having a great day. Um, I thought recording from this spot, like the lighting was good and whatever, but now that I'm looking at the background with just this plain blue wall, it reminds me of middle school picture day, but whatever, we're just gonna go with it anyway. Today, we're talking about hair. If you are, you know, a female backpacker or hiker, or even a dude who hikes and backpacks with really long hair, I'm sure you're familiar with just how matted and tangled it can get, especially when you don't have access to some of those modern comforts like a shower or, you know, a proper hairbrush, a blow dryer, things like that that help you to manage and maintain your wild hair. So I wanted to just offer a couple quick tips and things that I do to make backpacking with long hair a possible thing. <laughs> um, the very first tip is right here, the Mighty Braid. So the braid is my go-to for hairstyles when I'm about to hit the trail. This is how I keep it from getting matted and tangled, especially underneath that area on the back of the neck. If you've got long hair, I'm sure you're familiar with that spot right on the back of the neck where those mats and clumps can form. Can you hear that? What the heck is going on downstairs? I swear, since my husband got like power tools and everything, he's like constantly doing something. But I guess that's good because this house needs a lot of work. Maybe he's doing something really productive to help get the house all finished up. Whatever. But so I have a routine that I follow when I get to camp. So right before I go to sleep, I will comb out any knots that I see starting to form and I will rebraid my hair, but it'll be a very loose braid just to like keep it together while I sleep. When I wake up, I will unbraid it and then really brush through it, like give it a good brush through. And I have this little mini brush that is very lightweight. It's a wooden handle and it has a combination of plastic bristles with the little ballpoint on the end and then boar bristles in between. And I really love boar bristle brushes for, <laughs> that's a tongue twister, but I really love that type of brush for a couple of reasons. So I found boar bristles to be very gentle on my hair. My hair's pretty delicate and so the wrong brush will just rip through it, break it, and do a ton of damage. But I found boar bristles to be very gentle. It also helps to redistribute the oils throughout your hair, which, you know, out there in the wilderness, it gets oily, you're sweating. And so the boar bristle brush really helps to redistribute those oils and kind of um, smooth out or fix those areas that are starting to get kind of greasy and oily before needing to add baby powder or something to my hair as like a dry shampoo substitute. And then I will redo my braid, but I'll do a very, very tight French braid. So taking pieces at a time, braiding it in. <laughs> Obviously looking good out on the trail is not a priority, but I do like what Earl Schaefer had to say in his book, Walking with Spring, which if you don't know who that is, he's like the first AT through hiker. He talked about how often he shaved on the trail because he tried to look presentable as often as he could. And I kind of appreciate that sentiment. You know, there's some things you can control and a lot of things you really can't control when you're out on the trail and you don't have access to those modern comforts. But it's not an excuse to let all standards for hygiene and looking sort of well kept, you know, go out the window. <laughs> He's still drilling, why? Um, for the most part, the braid is the key. Now, something I'll also do is I hike with a bandana, especially in those summer months, because it helps to keep the sweat off my neck. And if I need to like wipe my face because, you know, just how flippin' hot it gets out. But I've always got a bandana handy. I will tie off the bandana on the end of my hair and then I will roll it under and then bring it around behind my ears and tie it up top. And this is a way to kind of make a bun out of the braid 
and tie it up so that it's not sitting on the back of your neck or you know rubbing up against the shoulder strap of your pack it is in its own neat nice tucked in little style and you're accessorizing with your bandana another quick tip i've heard of from the first 40 miles podcast was uh heather talked about when she's got little baby hairs or flyaways one of the ways to maintain those or kind of tame them into place is to use a little bit of lip balm and just kind of apply it to those flyaways so that it will rejoin the rest of your hair instead of like frizzing out into your face and you know being annoying i haven't tried that yet but i have found that if you've got the spray on sunscreen lightly just kind of go across those flyaway hairs with it to put it back in place with the rest of my hair, my bangs, whatever's going on. And if it's that cheaper kind of sunscreen that makes that film on your skin where if you sweat too much, it'll start to peel. That's the kind that I've found works the best for that. Not that that's the whole purpose, but it's a way to multi-use, you know, a can of cheap sunscreen that you've brought out on the trail with you. You can hike with long hair. You don't have to chop it all off. At least I haven't had to yet. I do need a serious trim. It's reached the mind of its own stage where it was kind of funny at first how it just gets into everything and does what it wants. But like a toddler that's retold a joke for like the 80th time, it was cute at first, but now it's just kind of exhausted and it's not charming anymore. So I think I could use a little bit of a trim. I'm not gonna chop it all off, just a little bit to manage things. This is a pretty short video, but I just wanted to share some of those quick tips and tricks with you if you needed some help when it comes to taming your really long hair for hiking and backpacking. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. What are you building down there? Were you building an arc because it's been raining so much? Well, we're building a, building a wife and building stores because y'all are so lonely and she wasn't coming back soon. Okay. <laughs> Let me live my life in the air Let my friends in the forest give me shelter up there And I live my life without cares in the mountains again In the mountains again